Hello and welcome back to some more Genshin Impact. So before I do anything, I just wanted to point out uh, that I got this uh, fish weapon, the Luxurious Sea Lord, for uh, D. Luke, leveled up to level 80. Um, it's going to be a little bit before I can uh, get it to level 90. I'm going to have to start farming for these things, but that's not a big deal. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to this enemy camp down here for the challenge, the very first challenge in Liyue. The camp leader will attempt to restore HP in a pinch. I don't know what that means, but I'll find out, I suppose. Think you can get away? Now let's see what the uh, luxurious sea lord do does. Okay. It didn't do what I was hoping it would do, but it's fine. There we go. Wait a second. Or did it? Let's look at that closely again. I don't see any giant tunas coming out. Oh, whatever. Leave him alone. Do that. Oh, it's recovering its HP. No big deal. I won. That wasn't too hard. So, this weapon... I wasn't really paying it attention to the amount of damage it was doing in that fight. It was a little bit chaotic. So I'll, pro I'll try to pay more attention in the next fight. I don't see anything else around here as far as uh, item drops are concerned. Oh, there's some wheat right here somewhere. Oh, there we go. May as well grab it since you never know if I can use it or not. I don't know why they made it go that high. Yeah, it's starting to drop down, so... Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. Of course that happened. I've got to drop down again, I think. Probably. I hate how they design these things. They're never as accurate as they should be. Okay, so I have to defeat the 12 enemy leader, I mean, 12 enemies in this camp, wherever it might be. Oh, there they are. Time for takeoff. Ah. There you go. So I'm doing a fair amount of damage. Although, against these fire guys, uh, what's his Here name is kind of useless. D Luke, at least when his weapon is on fire. I know that uh, getting this weapon leveled up as high as I have has actually helped a lot with the amount of damage it can deal because it increases uh, attack power by 200 compared to what he had on before. That said, I better get rid of the leader. Which is the one with the little skull next to the HP bar. Okay, the leader is dead. Now I just have to worry about this guy. I stopped worrying about switching between characters after after a certain point. Okay, collect all this stuff. Oh. I want to make sure I collect all of the slime condensates and stuff like that because it's I'm starting to run low on that stuff from upgrading people and upgrading my characters. I haven't really upgraded them very much between this video and the last video, but 
The only upgrading I did was with D Luke. And his weapon. <gasps> okay. It's somehow it's always off. The I don't know why they designed it like that. It just irritates me. Okay, this is definitely the enemy camp that I need to go to. Think you can get away? Brace yourselves. How rude. Yeah, I agree. Ah. Oz, reveal. Oops. What was up with that? That was weird. I wonder what hit her. This is order. Stabilize. Midnight Phantasma. Burn. Okay. Where's the leader? The leader is over there. He's all invisible. Time for takeoff. Let's play. I will have order. There we go. Solidify. Nafta. Find all these items that are dropping after this. You can't run from me. I wonder why they say that. I, never, I think I've mentioned that before, but Here we go. kind of a weird Thank thing to say. Crumble. The hunter becomes the hunted. Oh, there's just a ton of them. I wish they didn't put that stupid uh, fire nearby. Go ahead, force the camera to look over at it. Thank you. Okay. Now there should be more over here, I think. I could be wrong about that. Did they all get sucked up to the, to the other? Okay, whatever. And let's make our way to the next one. Hopefully this next one will have enemies that can be uh, pulled into Venti's elemental burst. Oh boy. Order guide you. Okay. Gather. By royal decree. Okay, well. Get to deal as much damage to this big guy as possible. Time for takeoff. <laughs> Let's play. <sighs> Come on. What was up with that? It's like my character is uh, the button. That was really weird. It's a little bit unfair. What? That was it? Okay. That was. I wasn't expecting it to suddenly end like that. I'm gonna have to heal my characters between the, this fight and the next one. Yeah, there's at least one more. If not, a few more. Let me, let me actually check that. I'm not entirely sure now. Okay, there's two more. Uh, the, this one will have a ruined guard. This one will have, uh, okay. Now I want to see if there's any other items around here very fast. I'm not seeing anything. Since vice shops were involved that time, I wanted to make sure that I found everything. Um, oh, that's all the way out there on that island. Huh. Interesting. 
I'll use the uh, currents to get there. I'm just going to heal up first, that's all. You know, wind currents, that is. Okay. Here's this is teleporter. And then start making my way back to where I was before. Wherever that was. It was like right around here. Yeah, there it is. I was wondering when that would appear. Just avoiding the lady there. The Tui lady. Eh. They could definitely do with having somebody readjust these because every single time it feels like I'm missing it, just barely. Or barely. Like, look at that. How am I supposed to get into it if, if the wind curtain is right in front of the one I'm supposed to go into? It's just dumb. Now was I supposed to know there was going to be a wind current from below anyways? It's also dumb. Uh, before I go into this fight, let's go to the food options. And uh, I'm going to go ahead find a food item increases all party members attack by 320 you know I'll use that why not there we go do that here we go that think you can get away this is order. Uh, why would you aim for the one that's over there? Ah, whatever. I... I'm tired of trying to understand how this uh, targeting system works. They really could benefit from having a real targeting system in this game. Instead of this auto targeting crap. Pause, reveal thyself. Yahoo! It's like one of the most basic I will have order. uh you know things that you have for a 3D action RPG system. Or a 3D battle system in general, really. It's one of the reasons why when Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time came out, it was a pretty big deal that they added that, if I recall. Okay, so there's one more. I did take a little bit of damage that time, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm more worried about whether or not there are any other items. I guess not. Okay. I don't know if that food buff really helped that much, but it's there, so. I wish they had these spread out through the game in general. Like, more of those types of pathways. It would be really nice. Time for takeoff. By royal decree. Ah, uh, whatever. Order guide you. Verdict is. Think you can get away? Midnight Ventat. And, oh, there's more. I wasn't expecting that, but okay. 
this is a little bit different Solidified. from what I was expecting, for sure. Oz, reveal thyself. That threw me off. I will have order. I've got to get rid of that healer. Whoever that healer is, I've got to get rid of him. Time for takeoff. Okay. Retribution. Order guide you. And there we go. Okay, good. That wasn't too bad. I mean, my characters were taking quite a bit of damage there at a certain point, but... You have pursued this region's trail of delicacies to its end. So I've done all of them. And I'm assuming that that means that I am completely done with that aspect. Let's go ahead and refine... Uh, this one last time. And there we go. Ah, that should be pretty good. And now I think about it. Let me see something. I have 1,650 Festive Fever, which I believe is actually kind of like the... Well, I wouldn't say it's a max, because I don't know if there's festive fever you get for that, but, uh, it, at the very least, it's past what I Boats needed are made for transferring commodities back Let me and see forth. something very fast. And those that... Go into this. It's saying that there's something in here. I want to get rid of that red marker. I don't see it. Whatever. I'm across Leo. I tend to stay a while. So it is um, where many things. Now I can start making some wishes. And what I'll do is is I'm gonna stick strictly to well, let me see something. Huh. For now I'm gonna stick strictly to uh Sanganomiya Kakomi's just because uh Oh, I got Kakomi. That's cool. Okay. And I've got another uh, another one of uh, Xingqiu, or however you say his name. Uh, but since I already had his constellations completely maxed out, it gave me... Uh, five masterless star glitter instead of two so that's cool and then i got this bow here uh rust okay increases normal attack damage by 40 percent but decreases charge attack damage by 10. okay so there we go uh that was not too bad overall and i'll save the rest for now and I'm not going to make any wishes on this yet either. Even though I could. Okay. Uh, with that out of the way, since I now have a new character, I'm going to see... I suppose I can level up her up. At least to this point. And I can have her ascend as well, possibly. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on having her ascend. I just didn't want her to be at level one. Okay. The same as I remember. Uh, what else did I want to do? Why is it acting like there's something here for me to do? Oh, I know what it is. Benny's adventure team assemble. It's this because I got, I got her. They wanted me to get rid of the new tag there. Where are those who share? Okay. Memory? Where do I need to go next? I need to go over to uh, three to get ready. Here we go. Which is the next part, 
and quite possibly the very final part of the event, the timed event. Hopefully it is anyways. I'd be, I, I'd be really happy to be finally done with this because it's very, very close to the deadline. There's like only a day left or a little over a day left before this timed event is done. And as fun as it's been to see old characters and everything, and, you know, popping up, uh, I don't want to have to rush it at the very, very end here. Okay, what do you have to say, Kuching? Oh, you found me. Huh? Is everything okay? Something is weighing on Kuching's mind. <laughs> Traveler, I have found myself in something of a predicament. So in the have competition, I. I voted for Smiley Yenxiao. So you're frustrated because you can't go back and vote for Xiangling instead? No, that's not it. As a judge, I had a duty to remain objective. I made my decision after thinking about it very carefully. My conscience is clear. Xiangling is my friend. So by rights, I should be honest with her about this. But as you know, I voted based purely on my personal opinion. As a contestant, Xiangling may not be able to appreciate this. And I do not know how to deal with people of her temperament. <sighs> I just don't know how to break it to her. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. Just say it however comes next. Actually, Xiangling of all people isn't bothered about that kind of stuff. And anyway, she still won in the end. And she's right there, listening. Oh, hey, here you are. I've been looking for you for ages. Xiangling, there's something I need to tell you. Hmm? W what is it? My grandfather always said to me, in contests of food, always follow your heart. Which is to say that in gastronomical disputes, or indeed competitions, one must cast their vote for the party that they agree with. This decision must be based on one's honest thoughts, not influenced by any external factors. Of course, that was just my grandfather's opinion. But, I have to say, I am inclined to think he had a point. So, despite the fact that I am your friend, I cast my vote for Smiley Yen Chao's Adeptus Temptation. I think you mean the Golden Shrimp Balls? <laughs> well, maybe it was. I like Golden Shrimp Balls. Is that a problem? She's shutting up. You were acting so serious that I honestly thought something was up. It's fine. Doesn't bother me one bit. Huh? You voted for who you wanted to. And that's totally okay. In fact, that's exactly how it should be. Otherwise, how could it be a fair competition? So, you made a point of telling me. Is that because you were worried that it made you a bad friend? <clears throat> I... Don't be absurd. <sighs> Didn't I say already? I love this about you. You're just so conscientious about everything. Half-baked feedback just isn't meaningful to me at this stage. Seeking reassurance is what novices do, and it's been a long time since I was a novice. The way forward from today will only get more challenging, as will the dishes I'll need to cook. Honestly, I'll need friends like you along the way. You have a strong sense of responsibility, Kuching. But you know, not everything is always about responsibility. Yes, you're a Qixing, but you're also you, Kuching. When you're with friends, you don't need to think about everything so thoroughly. You know that's what Mingguang's like, right? Beidou's always telling me about how well she gets along with Mingguang. They even play chess aboard her ship sometimes. So you see, Mingguang's kind of bold in that she doesn't let her identity and reputation get in the way of her ability to have a good time. You can take a leaf out of her book. Outside of work, it's time to let go and relax. Shen Li is right on the money. Traveler, Shen Li, I... Uh, anyway... What are we standing around here for? Let's go and check on the status of the Stove God statue. Oh, yeah! I haven't nearly forgotten about that! Let's go see! 
hiding. Even though it's been a little while since I visited it. Uh, so let's go ahead and make our way over to Eugene Terrace. Anyways, yeah, so I'm glad that Zhang Ling wasn't upset about that. I mean, I didn't think she would be. Since, like she said, it was a competition. Okay, check the large rocks. How strange. It hasn't changed one bit. This doesn't make any sense. We cooked our hearts out. Does this mean the competition wasn't enough to awaken the statue? <laughs> oh well. I suppose it was simply not meant to be. There was still time. Don't lose hope. Yeah, we've waited this long already. There's no harm in waiting a little longer. Right, Xiangling? Yep, there's still time. Let's be patient. We'll all see this through together. On another note, I have some good news for you, Kuching. Things are looking optimistic for that recipe you gave me. Master came by before the competition and filled in the parts that were missing. So now I'll be able to cook it. In fact, I'll go find somewhere to make it right now. Wait here. Shangling. Oh, uh, and Traveler, could you come with me? Huh? You only just beat Smiley and Chow. You think you're up for challenging us already? All right, time for me to get real. All right, time for me to stop. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, why? Uh, I'm sometimes... Uh, I'm something of the kitchen god myself. Obviously not what I meant. You collect recipes, don't you? I thought you'd probably be needing this dish during your travels, so I figured I'd share it with you. Oh! Right! Paimon knew that! <laughs> Sheesh, we totally misread that situation. Who oh, am I kidding? Zheng Ling's the real kitchen queen here. Uh-huh. Jeez! Careful eating your words so fast, you'll give yourself heartburn. <clears throat> what are you staring at me for? Go on, go get on with your cooking. Huh. Okay then. Uh, wait a second. Didn't they just gave me the uh, the recipe? They gave me two recipes, I think. Let me see, uh, see that very fast. Uh, okay, they only gave me the one. I looked away for a second, and I thought that they had added a second. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead to where they want me to go to. Or not. What's going on here? That couldn't possibly be the end of it all. Is it? Oh, they want me to make it. Okay. So make the delicious chili mince cornbread buns. Which I guess I could do by going to... Osmanthus wine tasters. By, uh... Oh, what do you call it? A stove. Probably at one Min restaurant or whatever. And then I'll make my way back to the Eugene Terrace, and that'll probably be enough to finish this whole thing. Probably. Before I do that, though, let's talk to Chef Mao. Uh, because I want to see if he has any food that I can buy from him. He does. So I'm going to just buy all this stuff very fast. Oh, they, they're they selling Julian chili as well? That's an... Uh, that's part of the... Uh, uh, that's actually something that's involved with increasing some characters' levels. You know, like Ascension levels. Okay, so... I need to... Make the delicious chili... Okay, chili mince cornbread buns. That's what I'm looking for. And it's probably at the very bottom of this, but I... Okay. Yeah, it's right there. And thankfully I have the ingredients needed to do it. Uh, so I'll cook with... Um... No, well, I guess it doesn't really make a difference, does it? There we go. 
and now the So this is what the dish from the recipe looks like. Let's go give it to Kuching. Oh. Mine's ready too. Let's go together. Okay. And I'll teleport to that one uh, area right up above. Just because it's faster. It's kind of uh, odd that they required you to use your own ingredients for that. I, I mean, I would have had to have gone out and farmed them if I didn't have them. Which would have kind of sucked, but I would have done it. Okay. I've already collected all those, I suppose. Okay. We're back. And the traveler and I made one each. Here, have a taste while it's still warm. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. Kuching tastes everyone's dishes. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? What does that face mean? I. This flavor. I've tasted it before. Uh, Kuching? Uh, apologies. Xiongling, Traveler, thank you both. This is everything I had hoped it would be. It tastes wonderful, and quite amazingly, somehow it took me right back to my childhood, when my grandfather was still around. Really? That's awesome! I didn't have a chance to fully explain before. In fact, when Master had filled in the missing parts of the recipe for me, I realized that I already knew how to make this dish. You already knew? You mean, you were able to make this without ever seeing the recipe? Uh-huh. My dad taught me how to make it. Wait, but isn't this dish from Kuching's grandpa's notes, though? About that. I do not believe that this recipe was my grandfather's creation. My grandfather was a well-known real estate tycoon in Liyue, and also a scholar. He was an avid collector of old books and was quite knowledgeable on many of Liyue's customs and traditions that are no longer practiced. As a child, I used to spend a lot of time with him in his study. We'd read the classics together, then debate how much of it was actually genuine, and whether Rex Lapis was real or not. He used to say, books are just a bridge that bring us a little closer to history. It's up to those of us in later generations to ask these questions, search for the answers, and decide what they mean. Since then, my grandfather has passed on, and I've grown up to become a Chising. My views on Rex Lapis have changed in this time, too. From myth to reality. For me, the name Rex Lapis is inextricably wound up with memories of my grandfather. Whenever I see his name written down, it always reminds me of sitting in my grandfather's study, seeing all of his notes. As I said earlier, this recipe came from those same notes. It's an ancient dish that he was trying to restore to its original form. But, unfortunately... Without the full recipe, he never quite succeeded. Still, each time he tried cooking it, he'd always get me to have a taste while it was still warm. <sighs> the memories. This really is the taste of my childhood. Ancient dish? Are cornbread buns really that old? Well, at least in my family it is. My dad learned how to make it from his dad. And supposedly it's been passed down that way for generations. We call them chili mince cornbread buns. They're a traditional folk food snack, easy to pack up and take with you on the road. So they're the perfect thing to eat on the go. La, la, la. Oh. <laughs> Seeing Bwoba just reminded me of something. I actually made this dish on the day I first met Bwoba. How did you first meet? It was in a cave in the mountains. I ducked inside to get out of the rain and saw an offering table in there, so I put the cornbread buns I brought with me on it. Then I ended up falling asleep, and when I woke up, I found out that Guoba had eaten every last one. Guoba followed me around ever since. We're practically family now. Hold up! Stop the conversation! Look! The... the stone! <laughs> <laughs> it's... it's... 
Is that Woba? Woba? What are you... What? Meta? Ah, I see the chili mince cornbread buns have been served. Uh, even Guova looked shocked. Master! It may not be Guova, it might be like Guova's ancestor or something. Granny, look! The, the stone god statue looks just like Guova! Oh, indeed it does. After all, Guova is the deity you've okay. been searching for. God of the stove. Guova... Guova is a god? And Guova's eyes are wide open. You asked me if a sufficiently festive atmosphere would be enough to reawaken the stove god. And my answer is this. Yes. And no. The stove god has always been a deity with great affection for the people, and who acts in response to their desires. To him, the heart's passions and the heart's desires are not the same thing. Passion can be a technique, a skill, something derived from experience. But desires, they are deeper, more innate. They are the heart's strength in its purest form. Masterful chefs is wonderfully exciting, but it is more an exercise of passion than of desire. And passion alone will not suffice to reawaken the stove god from his deep slumber. But just now, when Kuching ate this dish he had longed for, a deeply held desire was fulfilled. As well as receiving an answer to her question, she also gained something much more precious. A moment of poignant nostalgia so vivid, it felt like she was right there alongside her grandfather. The enormous power unleashed by the fulfillment of this desire resonated with the Stove God statue and caused it to manifest once more the form it took in the past. Of course, the Stove God himself is not contained within the statue. <laughs> the true Stove God has been here with us all along. <sighs> How does it feel, seeing a statue of yourself from your glory days? Ah, look at him. Still so majestic. Glory days? Wait, what happened? Did Woba used to be different from now? Oh, yes. Back in his day, your Gwoba was once the patron god of the soil. But all the wisdom and power he had then, he has since surrendered to the soil itself. A god surrendering their power to the soil. I have heard this turn of phrase before, but what does it mean? The kinds of trials and tribulations that a land can face are far more than you could imagine. Droughts, floods, torrential rain, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and plagues. The threat of disaster will never fully disappear from Liyue. Even woes that have never been faced before in history will come to pass in the future. Such things affect you mortals far more than we Adepti, with our immortal forms. He once walked with you over the barren plains until you arrived at last at the harbor. He joined you in building your dwellings and lighting the stoves. It was his hand that lit the very first street lamp of Liyue and brought the aroma of cooked food into every household in the land. You mortals no longer remember him, but back in the age when you did, he was the closest of all the Adepti to the common folk. Hmm. Oh. Machosius. God of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The Stove God cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and 
force the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, huh. the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp. Fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster and plague arose once more. The stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended and his wits greatly reduced, thus his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame, then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. The stove god departed, and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves, and cook food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. What is that giant creature? Nature oh, wait, provides. I know what that is. The mountains rejoice. We are blessed by heaven's good grace. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive. That was neat. You once told me that dining is the profoundest of customs in the human world. To eat well is to consume vitality itself. And to drink well is to partake of the very essence of the world. It is a matter of paramount importance, you said. For people cannot face the arduous journey ahead on an empty stomach. At once a humble affair and a profound one. A humble meal of maize and spring water is also profound in that. By ensuring one's survival, it paves the way for millennia of human history and culture to come. My dear friend, Liu has changed so much while you have slept. Looking at the prosperity and beauty around us today, does it make you happy? Huh. Woba, this is kind of a huge deal. Why didn't you say anything? Uh, because he doesn't talk? Uh. He... he is not who he once was. Even the power of speech evades him now. There is no way he could have told you. Oh. Oh, well, but... but... Mm. Xiangling. Do not be saddened, Xiangling. There are two sides to everything. Guo Ba may have lost many of his formal faculties, but... He is now as carefree as can be, without a single worry in the whole world. In this world we inhabit, who can truly be said to live a life free of all woes? Those with a mind and with the knowledge will certainly be troubled by all manner of things. But he has gone further than us in his journey. He had both wisdom and courage. Everything he took upon himself he was also ready to part with. 
His carefree demeanor today is a testament to the fact that he is at rest. So since you are his friend, take good care of him. Go out to walk and play. Allow him to eat, drink, and be merry. I will! You can count on me! Xiangling, you have an adeptal affinity. Guoba follows you around because he has respect for you. The moment he awoke, he was met with a familiar flavor in the chili mince cornbread buns he ate. After all that time, he still recognized the dish he had invented. And he approved of you as the one who had cooked it. That's right. The taste of one's home cuisine always brings back memories of home. Though he remembered nothing, eating the food you had cooked gave him a feeling of familiarity. That is why he stuck by you. You may be the first person in history to give the stove god the experience of being a satisfied customer. That makes you quite a remarkable chef. I love Zhang Ling's cooking too. If that's true, I couldn't be happier. Because putting a smile on customers' faces is what we chefs are called to do. Well then, it's getting late and I still have things to do. Time for me to say goodbye. Traveler, Paimon, Xiangling, thank you all very much. I look forward to spending more time together in the future. Sounds good. We'll be waiting. I guess my dad's probably heard the good news already, but I should still go catch up with him. Master, it's been a while since you came by. Why don't you join me? He thinks about you all the time, you know. He's always telling me to invite you over. Oh, goodness me. Then, far be it from me to refuse. Off we go, then. Let's saunter over gently and see how all the city folk are getting along. Okay, then. Oh, now they want me to go to one restaurant. I thought that really was the end, but... Uh, I should have... I don't know if I ever said anything or not, but I should probably guess that uh, uh, Guoba was who they were, you know, who was going to appear or whatever. You know, the statue. But, uh, yeah. It's pretty interesting. Hi, Dad! I'm back! Hey, hey! What are you doing? I should be the one handling that. Oh no! Globa's taken off! Uh, look who it is. Oh, it's Zhang Ling. Hmm? Oh, it's you. Hello there, old friend. Oh, bless my soul. Are you out for a stroll as well? Given the season. It felt fitting to take a leisurely walk while the meal is being prepared. I suppose it makes sense that we would meet him as well. Quite right. And it also gave us the chance to run into you. Guoba may not recognize you, but as ever, he seems quite delighted to see you. So, Guoba doesn't remember anything, but can still feel when something's familiar? Friendship will always withstand the ravages of time. Traveler. What do you think of the name of this festival? Moon Chase. Evocative and seasonal? The moon is a carrier of countless emotions. So many things only seem to surface as we gaze up beneath its poignant glow. Wherever the moonlight shines, the heart is wont to follow. Fond memories of those no longer with us. Debts of gratitude to old friends. The meaning of ages past and gone. All wrapped up in the city that has existed for so many moons to date. All these things and more. They are why people chase the moon. <laughs> in old age, the sight of many things puts one in a wistful mood. But children are always a beautiful sight to see. Such exuberant life force. It, it seems to well up from deep within the land itself. A land that has been in existence for so many millennia, and yet, one that still dazzles today. Perhaps that is what defines Liyue. Traveler, this Moon Chase Festival has been all the more entertaining with you here to witness it. 
Now, let's have Xiang Ling brew us a nice pot of tea. We shall drink and chat at our leisure. Okay then. And oh, it said to be continued. Is there still more? May as well grab that book right there. Uh, or is that completely done? I can't tell anymore. Well, those are shown as all done. Uh, obviously, I can't claim those. And this is done. That's done, and that's done. And then these three should also be done. So I'm assuming that that's it as far as uh, this whole event is concerned. It's just not showing it as being done. I kind of wish that they would have some kind of stamp on there that says like 100% complete, you know? Uh, anyways, what's up with this? Oh, I already completed that. Okay. Where do you want to go next? Uh, if you'd like to see Liu Ace. No, I don't want to see nothing. Let's look at the quest list very fast. Okay, so the next part of the Tatara Tales quest is indeed available. So in the next video, I will be doing that, uh, as well as uh, probably some other quests as well. I mean, I'll probably focus primarily on Tatara Tales, and hopefully I can completely finish it, because it's been going on for a while. But I also might jump into the uh, idle teapot talk quest as well, since it's been sitting there for a long time, and I've been ignoring it. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.